I make the ship run? Yes, do. That'll be a lot. But the store call isn't the place for pretty clothes like yours. Oh, oh come, come on. on. Be a good fellow. Take us down. No. Well, well, all right. Let's go. You win. You beat him by five shovels, Bozo. That's four bits you owe me, Mike. That a boy, that a boy. Better luck next time, Mike. Yeah, yeah, you see? You stick to me and you'll get somewhere. Hey, wait a minute, Carter. Where do I come in? Ever since you come on this boat, you've been making bets on me. Well, I've been figuring. You've been making all the money, and I've been doing all the work. Well, sure, sure, that's right, that's right. I make you the champion, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm true being a sucker, see? If you didn't have your arm in a sling, I'd knock your head off. Well, don't let that arm worry you. Just a little trick I had on my sleeve, boys, to keep from working too hard. I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll bet you two bucks I can shovel more coal than you can. That's a bet. All right, let's get going, Jack. Come on. Come on. That arm got well pretty fast, Carter. Yeah, it always does. My old man was a contortionist. Well, you'll be a contortionist yourself if you can wiggle out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Just the faker, eh? And you even fooled the doctor. In the Panama, it was your arm. Panama, your neck. Right after you signed in Sydney, it was your back. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Just this. Dock you a month's pay and kick you off this ship at the next port. Well, that's okay with me. I was getting off there anyway. I got a real job waiting for me there. I'll get to work with that shovel. <laughs> Isn't this priceless? I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's funny, huh, sister? Well, one of these days I'll be right up there where you are, and then maybe I'll be laughing too. Come on, fly for a nickel. Oh, yes, you just missed his home. Step right up, baseball. Step right up, lots of fun. Ah, that's the end. Swing like a rusty game. Come on, Yale Come on, folks. Come on, take a chance. Come on, boys. Come on, take a chance. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, boys. Come on. 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 You're quitting, you get no dough. No dough, huh? No dough. That's what's the matter with you guys. You can't take it. Well, see how you can take it. Oh, get to Will be five I'm afraid you'll have to charge. What do you mean? You no pay? I ain't got a cent. Three times today the people told me charge it. Now I get a man. If you don't pay right now, I call the cops. Wait a minute, Tony. Take them both out of that. Thanks. Quite all right. Famous fortune teller, right in the inside. Ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, Abdullah. Why, hello, Bob. How are things going? Pretty good, thank you. That's fine. Nice. What did you do that for? Why not? You can't pay you back. Yes, that's all right. Glad to help you out. Did you lose your job? Yeah, how did you know? I saw you when you started to work this afternoon. Didn't think you'd stay there long. Not much of a job anyway. No, catching baseball's my eye in my regular line, but you gotta eat, you know. You work around here? Yeah. This is my place. Oh. Hey, what are you selling? A little glimpse of hell and a few suggestions as to how to keep out. Hell, huh? This is a funny racket. I ought to be right at home here. <laughs> well, come inside. We'll clean up that eye and see what you really look like.
I get you. It's a peep show. Who's the dame? That's Cleopatra. The sensuous Egyptian queen who used her beauty to turn great soldiers into fools. She ain't so hot. I've seen better dames than that in Singapore. Ah. Where's the mug? The funny looking guy. That is Dante. One of the greatest poets that ever lived. I never heard of him. He was born in Florence, Italy, 600 years ago. The message he gave to the world in his story of the Inferno burns as brightly today as when he wrote it. And it brought hope to millions who were seeking the right path in life. The greatest poem ever written. That's him over here, too, huh? This fellow here. Who's his sidekick in the kimono? That is Virgil, the noble poet of ancient Rome, who served as Dante's guide through the nine cycles of the Inferno. <laughs> Their idea of a hot time, huh? <laughs> uh oh. Looks like dirty work was going on here. That's Salome, who danced with the head of John the Baptist. Where's the rest of them? She demanded his life as the price of her love. Uh-huh. Lost his head over her, huh? <laughs> That's a pretty good-looking guy, that fell up there with the cheese knife. That is Alexander the Great, who had conquered the world when he was 30 years old, and then wept because there were no other world to conquer. Oh, that's funny. What? Well, I was just thinking, now, and I, I'm just that fella's age, and here I am weeping because I got a sack in the eye. You ought to have been a doctor. You'd have made good money at it. <laughs> there are more important things in life than making money. <laughs> what? Well, in my case, bringing a little happiness to those I meet along the way, sometimes with a message of hope. Giving is better than receiving. Yeah, that's what people used to tell me when I was a kid. I believed it, too, until I had it knocked out of me. Every time I had a chance at something good, some smarter guy took it away from me. Well, don't give up. Stick to it, and you'll win in the end. You bet I will. I've had every trick of the trade kicked into me. Now it's my turn to kick back. That's fine. Thanks very much, Mr. Uh... McWade. They call me Pop around here. Thanks, Mr. McWade. My name is Carter, Jim Carter. Anything I can do for you, why, just uh, call me up. Uh, where? Well, now you got me. Maybe you'd like to stay here a day or two and help me clean this place up. I'd be glad to pay you for it. Are you in the square with that? Certainly I am. Sure, it's okay with me. I'd like to, thanks. All right. I'll go out and light up and you make yourself at home, Jim. Okay, Pop. Helmet worn by Alexander the Great. Hey, uh, pal, you even look like me. <laughs> yes, I can see a great resemblance. The noses are the same, but... But there's something different about the eye. The eye? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, do you know what that fellow did? He conquered the world. He was just my age, too. That's right. But it didn't do him any good. What did he cut the rope for? Oh, that wasn't just a rope. That was called the Gordian Knot. And it was tied in such a way that no one had been able to unravel it. Till Alexander came along. I get it. And then he didn't waste time unraveling it. He just cut it in two, huh? <laughs> just like everything else he did. That's how he conquered the world. That's what I would have done, too. We even think alike. Well, while you're conquering the world, I think I'll go to work. You work here? Mm-hmm. I sell tickets for my uncle. Your yeah? uncle? Is that all? Your... Oh, so he's a great guy. Hello, Betty. Hello, Pop. I see you've already met Mr. Carter. Why, yes. We were discussing a mutual friend. <laughs> That's nice, indeed. Hello, darling. Well, how's it look outside? 
Be it pretty well crowded tonight. Oh, well, come on. Let's go get them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you kindly step up here, give me your attention, I shall endeavor to explain to you the mysteries of the inferno. We have many things inside, ladies and gentlemen, that must be seen to be appreciated. Things that will point out how careful of our daily lives we should be to make them as perfect as possible. Ah, uh, good evening. Won't you come in? Oh, no. Come on, big boy. Let's stand. Hey, does anybody ever pay you to get in the joint? Not many young people's here. After all, youth is the time for fun and happiness. And not the serious entertainment we have in here. Now look, why, why don't you dish it out to them so they'll like it? You know, I used to do a little barking in my time. Now, we're going to put hell on a paying basis, Bob, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Come on, come on, step down. All right, now, folks, get around, get around, get around. Come on, now, step up, step up, one and all. Now, folks, they're on the inside, they're on the inside. Yes, sir, they're on the inside. Beautiful women, beautiful women and big, strong men. And, folks, they're burning, they're burning. Do you hear what I say? They're burning. You see them twist and you see them squirm. And, ladies and gentlemen, they're alive. They live, they live. How do they down in a den of fire? And they neither walk nor talk. They crawl upon their stomachs. And ladies and gentlemen, you see them all for a dime. One dime, 10 cents, the 10th part of a dollar. Just. What was the name of the day we gave Julius Caesar the run around? Cleopatra, but it wasn't Julius Caesar, it was Mark Anthony. You're right. And you will see Cleopatra, the girl who came from Egypt and made the Romans like it. And her book. Who slit the guy's throat and carried his head around on a platter? Salome. Gee, you know all the answers, don't you? You're a smart girl. Come on now, folks, come on. Get an eye full of the beautiful women who have sinned. Hey, what's happened to Pop? He's got a barker and he's doing business. Yes, Pop had become up on my counter today. Huh? This is the Inferno, the great Inferno. Personally conducted by our friend Professor Daddy here, the great Italian expert. Come on now, ladies and gentlemen, crowd right in. Crowd right in. Meet the gentleman personally. Come on, folks, and prepare for the future. Prepare for the future. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and now I have a special treat in store for you. I have here the original skull of Mark Anthony. You will pardon me. I am a professor of anatomy, and I know that that is the skull of a child. You're right. Sure, sure. It's the skull of Mark Anthony when he was a little boy. <laughs> I don't know how to fool these people. You don't have to, Pop. I'm doing that. Well, why don't I show them? I don't know. I can talk them into hell, Pop. You'll have to get them out of it. Go on, go on now. The place is packed. You think it'll be all right? Sure, it'll be all right. Go on, go on. Give them the works. Sorry, we're all sold out. You know, you've certainly done wonders with this place. Thanks. What are you making? Sweater. Sweater, huh? That's what I need. And this is my favorite color, too, Bill. <laughs> You think maybe you could finish it before I leave? You think you could stay till I finish it? Sure, if it takes you long enough. You know, my stomach needed that hamburger much more than my eye did. How about you and me having a little snack? I'd love to. <laughs> Good evening, Tony. Oh, hello, Miss Betty. How the business? Fine. How are the hamburgers? How do you like them this time? Raw? <laughs> now, we'll have a medium. Onion? No, you sap. Number five. Story you lost again, Miss Betty. Does anyone ever win, Jonesy? Those hams have been there ever since I can remember. Wait a minute, Betty. I'll get a ham for you. We'll hang it up in Pop's museum. Number seven. Number seven. Come on up. And I hope your number wins. <laughs> Give it a little help and maybe it will. Number seven. Great win. 
Say, you know all the tricks, don't you? Mm, not all of them. I'm going to come over and visit you so you can teach me some of yours. Glad to have you, brother. Let's get together. Going to be here long? I'm trying to arrange it. Well, that's a good idea. Here you are, Betty. Give him a good home. I loved him like a brother. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not going yet. Number six this time. Come on, we'll get a pal for him. Six. I see a man. Everywhere in your life I see this man. Is he good looking? His face is not very clear, but I feel his power, his courage, his strength. Big guy, huh? He's a powerful man, but there is something almost childlike about him. His simplicity. He's always striving, groping. He's trying to hide something. It's his tenderness, his capacity for love and affection. Hey, who is this bird? Yes, who is he? I don't know anyone like that. I will see if the crystal will tell me more. I don't blame you for not eating that stuff. What you need is meat. Here, here, look. Look, Daddy will show you a stunt. There. That's what they used to give me when I was a little fellow like you. Oh, I wouldn't feed him that, Jim. That won't hurt him any well. That'll do you good. Oh, well, that's good for you, Johnny. Jim, don't give him that. Take it away. Why? Because it's in trouble. Oh, Johnny, you don't want him to get in trouble. Oh, that's good for him. Why, oh, yes, sir, that's good for him. He knows what he wants, don't you, Alex? Why, of course I do. A little bone like that isn't going to hurt you, is it, honey? Well, I should say not. I should say not. Your pappy knows what to give you, don't he? Huh? Huh? I guess your pappy knows what's good for you, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Huh? Doesn't your pappy know it? Where you going? Come on, you want to take a walk? Want to take a walk? <laughs> yeah, just look at him standing up. Look at him standing up. Hello, folks. Hello, Hello John. Who's this fella? Who's this? <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Great kid. Getting better looking all the time. Sure he is. Getting to look more like his mother every day, aren't you? Yes, sir. What's on your mind, Josie? I want to remind you of that concessionaire's meeting tonight, Jim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we'd better be going. All right, we go right now. Yes, sir. We've got to go to the meeting. You'll be a concessionaire someday, won't you? Hmm? <laughs> yes, sir. Go to your... Don't drop him now. <laughs> there you are. There you are. No, I'll be waiting up for you, Jim. It's going to be pretty late. Yeah, maybe you better not wait, huh? No, I'll wait. Okay. Will you wait, too? Huh? Will you wait, too? No, you better go to bed. Uh, 
You both better go to bed. <laughs> See you later. Come on, Josie. Good night. Good night. Say goodbye to Daddy. Bye-bye. Now, folks, what I've been trying to tell you sums itself up to this. Any sucker can put his money away in a tin can or an old sock, but that isn't being smart. Don't spend your life working for your money. Make your money work for you. All <laughs> right. Now, if you come in on this new Inferno concession I'm building, you can't lose. You can't possibly lose. Hell is too popular. He's right, folks. Jimmy, I'm with you. You can count me in on it. Me too. Me think barely good idea. How much money do we need? Well, if we can raise 5,000, I can promote the rest. You can't go wrong, folks. With him at the head of it, you'll all make money. Just how are we going to make money out of it? For every dollar that you put in, you get a share of stock in the new company I'm forming. Where are you going to build it, Jim? Well, now, uh, that's where you come in, Dean. I'm going to build it right where your chute stands. But you don't have to put up any cash. All you have to do is turn over your lease for stock. I can't do that. Every cent I have in the world is tied up in that concession. And I won't take a chance. Well, I know, but uh, I've got another spot for you, Dean. See, you can move the place over there. You're not taking any chance. You see, Dean, you've, uh, you've got the only lease with uh, space enough for us to build. we really got to have you with us. That lease is my meal ticket. And I'm going to hold on to it. Is that final? Yes. That's final. Good night, everybody, and good luck to you. All right, all right. We, uh, we won't worry about the location at present. I'll take care of that. Now, you folks dig up your money, and I'll take care of all the rest. All right, come on. Let's all go over to Tony's. The grub's on me. Say, Jim, if you can't get his location, what are you going to do? I'm going to cut the Gordian knot. The Gordian knot? Yeah, just like that guy did. What's that got to do with the shoot the shoots? Watch me and you'll find out. Come on, how about a hamburger? Okay. Well, you put it over, Jim. I wish I knew how you did it. I knew Dean was behind in his rent, so I bought his lease out from under him, that's all. <laughs> that's what he gets for turning tough. I told him to get his shoots out of here and he hasn't done anything about it, so we'll start wrecking it Monday. Hello, Dean. How are you? What's on your mind? I can't move this shoot for at least a month, Carter. It'll take me that long to raise the money. You'll have to give me more time. I can't wait that long. You'll have to have it out of here by Monday. That's impossible. Can't change my plans. It'll break me, Carter. I'll lose every dollar I have. I'm sorry, Dean. Nothing personal. Come on, Jack. Take us down, will you? You said you were going to cut the Gordian knot. <laughs> now, Pop, this is where we're going to build it. Ah. Then you've arranged everything to Dean's satisfaction. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. That's all taken care of. Now, uh, have you figured out the different spots for the grottoes, Pop? Well, here will be the grotto for suicide. Uh huh. And here will show the punishment for treachery. Treachery? <laughs> that fellow Dante had a punishment for everybody. Sure, the guy had indigestion. <laughs> A lot of tough fellows in those days. Human nature doesn't change. The sins of Dante's time are the sins of today. Ah, oh, now, Pop, you know since the beginning of time there's only been one sin, and that's failure. People don't care how you win, so long as you win. Isn't that right? You'll win all right, Jim, but I wouldn't want you to if it hurt anyone else. If it hurt anyone else? Well, you know me better than that. You know I wouldn't hurt anyone else. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> Not unless I caught him eating some of my cake. Now, ladies and gentlemen, crowd around, crowd around, gather around. I have a surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen, that will thrill you. It is educational, it is inspirational, it is sensational. And when thousands crowd to the new inferno, this is what they'll see. <gasps> oh!
of man, you are going to see the most famous she-devils of all history. They have been brought out of hell at terrific expense on the part of the management just to entertain you. Ladies and gentlemen, cast your glance this way, and you will see the women who made strong men weak. And she's looking for a boyfriend. And now, look here, look here, look here, Salome, that twisty, wisty little dancer. Men lost their heads over her, folks. Aha, look at the fortune, the girl who put the knock in knockout drops. Boys, when she knocked them, they stayed knocked. Here we have Charlotte Corny. Just a little milliner. She killed the gentleman in the bathtub. That's why they invented showers. And still they come, folks. Still they come, the little darlings of history. Folks, this is just a sample of what you'll see on the inside. There are thousands of them. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a great treat in store for you. I want to introduce to you his satanic majesty in person, the devil. <laughs> Because before your very wondering eyes, you broke the powers of dark. gentlemen concludes our performance on the outside. Professor Dante himself will conduct you on the inside. I thank you. I can be as good a guide as Virgil. I'm sure you will be. Ah, oh, Pop, you look great. Are you ready? Now, just a minute. Don't rush us. Hey, we're packing them in out there. Jonesy's doing the barking. He's burning them at the stake. <laughs> Come on, Pop. They're waiting for you. Do your stuff now. Thanks, Betty. Don't be nervous, Pop. Oh, he's so happy tonight. At last, he's realized his ambition. Sure. He's got his chance now to tell a lot of people how to keep out of trouble. <laughs> Jim, let me stay tonight and take tickets like I used to. No, sir. No, sir. Not even tonight. You go on home with Sonny where you belong. Go on now. Here, yeah, wait a minute. Give that one to Sonny. <laughs> leads downward to a place of woe where souls lost forever eternal pain endure. Suicide. These sad roots 
cold imprisoned, the most unhappy of the hapless dead. Those who laid violent hands upon themselves, destroying life which God alone controlled. <laughs> night for you. Oh, what have you been keeping yourself, Dean? I tried to save what little I had. But it's all gone now. My wife died today. I'm sorry to hear that, Dean. There's nothing left for me now but hell. I thought you might like to watch me go there. Dean! Mrs. Hamilton, Mr. Carter is busy right now, but if you'll just wait a little while, I'll find out if he can see you. I won't pay him a cent more, Williams. I've had gambling in that club of mine for the last four years, and every year I've paid 15% for protection. You, you had a big year, and the price has gone up. Not for me, it hasn't. I'll move that game of mine someplace where I can run it myself without interference from anybody, and that's final. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. Every minute. Bye. Jonesy. Hiya. Williams looks a little white under the gills. How'd you make out with him? I'm through letting those guys dictate to me. I'm going to have a casino on the high seas. What are you going to use for money? Everything I have. Who's waiting for me out there? Free society dames from the Social Welfare League. Looks like a touch. It's a bad season for touches. Excuse me, boss. Oh, hello, hello, Tony. Come on in. Well, well, well. How are you, boy? What's on your mind, Tony? I won the money I put in the pier. Well, I've already told you, Tony, you haven't got any money in the pier. You've got stock. But you say the stock is just the same like the money. Yeah, sure, sure it is. It is, but you can't spend it. How about all the money that we've been making? Well, Tony, don't you see? We've been putting that back into improvements. But when I get my money? When we sell the pier? Now, that may be a long time off, Tony. After all, you can't... How much money do we pay Tony for running his concession? Twenty-five bucks a week. Oh, well, raise him to thirty-five. How's that, Tony? That's fine. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome, Tony. Stop in any time, Tony. Want to see those society names? No, sir. I've got a big railroad deal on, and this is one fellow I can't keep waiting. Now it's my turn to start, Daddy. Oh, no, no. Let me do it once more, huh? No, you make it go too fast, and it always jumps the track. No, no, I won't make it go fast. Now, look, I'll make it go slow this time. Watch. I did not. You did? I did not. I did not. I'll get you, Daddy. I'll get you. Oh, what is that? Oh. Oh, what is that? Jim, Sonny, are you two at it again? Come on, son. Come on, let me show you what Jones is going to do. You're a bigger baby than your son. Sorry I can't stay and play with you. Where are you going, Pop? 
Have an appointment down to the pier. Oh, now pop that in front of us and get along without you. You ought to retire anyway and take a rest. If I did, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. No, nobody can run it as well as Pop. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Pop. Okay, son, here's ten cents on the seven. And I hope you win. <laughs> you lost, Jonesy. Fine, boy, I'm proud of you. I couldn't have done it better myself. Jonesy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself teaching him to use a wheel. What do you want him to do, take that to school and trim the teacher? I was only wising him up, Chief. Yeah, well, don't do it. Okay, pal. Come on, son. I'll teach him to blow bubbles. <laughs> 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 My good woman, is that all you've learned from all those music lessons? <laughs> no, I know a few more notes. Let's see. How do you like this? Mm. That's pretty. Oh, well, Jim, I haven't told you yet, but Sonny isn't starting tomorrow at Miss Kirkland's school. Why not? Well, we had a letter from her this morning suggesting that we withdraw the application. What do you mean? Sonny's not good enough for the school? Well, it isn't Sonny, it's... it's us. What's the matter with us? Perhaps our world isn't quite their world. Well, we don't worry about it. There are lots of other schools that are just as good. Oh, let's see. You mean we haven't got any, uh, what do you call them, uh, any social background? That must be it. Well, maybe we can fix that. Now, this is what I have in mind to help you put over your children's lunch fund drive. You pick out some night next month, any, any night you like, and I'll turn my whole amusement pier over to you. You, uh, you can run it in the sort of a, uh, you know, uh, like a society bazaar. Whatever you take in goes to your charity. Oh, that's splendid. But, Mr. Carter, we don't know how to run a pier. Well, Mrs. Carter and I will be glad to help you in any way we can, or serve on your committee, or... I wonder, uh, suppose you and your husbands have dinner with us some night next week. We can talk over the plans then and complete all the arrangements. Thanks, we will. I've never met Mrs. Carter. It will be a pleasure. We're very grateful indeed. It'll be great fun, too. Many thanks, it's Mr. Carter. It's quite all right, it's quite all right. It's my pleasure, I assure you. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah. Just a half a minute. Um, President of the Caribbean Steamship Company is on the wire. Wants to know when he can have that appointment with you. Tell him we'll meet him at the dock in a half an hour. Uh, meet you at the dock in a half an hour. Isn't she a beaut, Pop? 500 feet long, 20,000 tons. I closed the deal for her today. Pop, this is the biggest thing I ever dreamed of. I'm going to make a fortune with her. Isn't the steamship business very risky? Oh, no. Not the way I'm going to work it. This is going to be the finest pleasure palace afloat. You mean a gambling ship? Sure, I mean a gambling ship. Certainly. Gambling's going to be the most profitable part of it. People love to gamble, Pop. That's part of life. Part of life that shouldn't be encouraged. Well, why, Pop? There's no law against it on the high seas. Besides, if people don't want to gamble, they don't have to. There'll be other entertainment. This ship is going to make history. History in the annals of vice, Jim. We seem to be drifting farther apart every day. We don't see things the same way, Jim. Oh, I don't think that's true, Pop. You know, I, I think the world and all of you, Pop, but... Well, I just can't think like you. Excuse me. Hello. Yes, Jonesy? Who? Building inspector. Oh, Harris? Oh, sure, put him on. Harris, boss wants to talk to you. Hello, Mr. Carter. Hello, Harris, how are you? Hmm? The Inferno building is unsafe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Been there for three years, it's as safe as the day we built it. Ah, not a chance. Well, I can't do that. Why, that means rebuilding the whole concession. Uh, no, no, I can't get down to my office today. Uh, suppose you come up here and see me this evening, Harris. All right, Mr. Carter. Oh, at last, it's finished. Do you like it, Tim? Mm-hmm. Great. Couldn't have done better myself. What is it? 
An opera bag, can't you tell? For what? Well, you may not know it, but you and I are going to the opera this year. And what's more, you're going to like it. Well, I'll try anything once. All right. Try and remember what day this is. Day, day, day. Why, this is Thursday, August the 12th. Servants day out. How's that for a memory? Fine. But what happened about this time six years ago? Why well, I don't know, Lee. Six uh, began to get dark, didn't it? <laughs> I thought you'd forgotten. It's our anniversary. That's it, all right. You know, I've been trying all day to remember what I bought that for. Jimmy, it's gorgeous. You, darling, you hadn't forgotten after all. I'm not apt to forget the most important day of my life. I have a surprise for you, too. Yeah, I'm no kidding. Mm -hmm. what? Ever see these people before? Oh, that's swell. <laughs> <laughs> we were a happy couple then, weren't we? We're happier now. We've always been happy together. I don't know what I'd have done without you, you and Sonny. Oh, I got something for Sonny. Here. Oh, you love that. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a fellow I get an appointment with. I'm sorry, darling. I know I shouldn't have asked him up tonight, but it'll only take a minute. All right. Suppose we look at it this way, Harris. Uh, I got you that job of yours, didn't I? Yes. Well, you wouldn't want to lose that job right now, would you? I couldn't afford that. I've got a family, you know. Well, then, if I were you, I'd forget all about that report. I'll take care of it. Oh, by the way, Harris, uh, how about buying a little present for your wife? Oh, I can't take that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you'd finished. No, no, no. Come in. Come in. Come in. May I uh, present Mr. Harris? This is my wife. How do you do, Mr. Harris? Mrs. Carter? Uh, Mr. Harris here is taking up a little donation for the Newsboys Fund. Oh, Jim was a Newsboy himself once. Yes, sir, and a good one, too. Well... Thanks again, Mr. Carter, and thanks for the donation. That's all right. Mrs. Carter. Good night. Good night. Mm, that was nice of you, Jim. But then you're always doing nice things. Well, now, maybe you'll think this is nice. You know, we were talking some time ago about uh, social background. Yes. Well, we got some. New places to go, new things to do, new friends. New friends, Jim? Mm-hmm. Handpicked from the garden. <laughs> what garden? <laughs> The leading society buds of the town. Are you serious, Jim? Sure, I'm serious. In a month, you'll be surrounded by social leaders. And what will I be doing with them? Oh, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> My guess is 103 pounds. Cigarette? No, thanks. Never used it. You know, Carter, this idea of yours is going to double the fun this year. Just putting charity on a paying basis, that's all. <laughs> By the way, you know, I've been thinking that we'd like to see you down at our club. And with your permission, I'd be very glad to propose you for membership. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Well, it's fine. Here he is, folks, a gentleman from Scotland, dressed in his best Sunday coat with the scent of the heather still on him and a scotch burr in his bar. Now, what am I offered for little Sandy McMaster? I'll start the ball rolling, lady. I bid $50. Only $50 for the Lord of Loch Lomond? Why, you old meanie, how does your wife ever live with you? I'll make it 75 Well, it looks like you have to live in poverty for the rest of your life. Now, gentlemen, let's get down to serious bidding. I'll bid 200 Sold to the gentleman with the white gardenia. So you're Scotch, eh? Well, I'll mix you with soda and call you highball. <laughs> My dear, you're doing marvelously. I don't know what we should have done without you. Within this cavern, imprisoned here in endless toil, 
with strained and broken backs. Rolling great blocks of granite to and fro, we find the foulest creatures born on earth. Those who were the blasphemers and traitors to their fellow men. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will come in closer, I will explain to you further. Jim, you're worn out. Why don't you come home and try and get some rest? No, no, no. I'm all right. Are you feeling better, dear? I'll be fine. Won't you please come home, Jim? You haven't had any sleep for two nights. Yes, Jim, go home with Betty. He's been wonderful. No, I want to stay a little while longer. All right, then. I'll call back for you a little later. All right, dear. Goodbye, Pop. Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, Betty. You love that daddy book, don't you, Pop? It isn't a book, Jim. It's the message. Dante in giving us a terrifying picture of the tormented souls of those who live ruthlessly, try to make us realize that by our own actions and thoughts toward our fellow man, we make our own heaven or hell here on earth. Like you, Dante found himself on the wrong road. The spirit of Virgil came to him in a vision and guided him through the inferno. Let me show you the punishments that were revealed to Dante for the evils of lust, avarice, blasphemy, perjury, murder, suicide.
fashion. Implicating Jim Carter. Extra, extra. Carter and Dieter. Carter and Dieter. Carter and Dieter. Jim Carter and Dieter. Extra, extra. Carter and Dieter. No, Mr. Carter. Inspector Harris of the Department of Public Safety, in his written confession that you've heard read here, stated that on the evening of August 12th, he went to your home in the capacity of both friend and official to advise you of the unsafe condition of your inferno concession and that you then and there threatened him with the loss of his position. That's not true. And that taking advantage of his fear, you forced him to accept a bribe of $2,000 to declare your building safe so that you would not be forced to expend the sum of $50,000 for its repair. Is that not true? It is not. But you had known Inspector Harris for some time, hadn't you? Yes. You even secured him his position. I did. Now, Mr. Carter, I want to ask you again. Was Inspector Harris in your home on the evening of August 12th? He was not. That's all? Your Honor, the defense rests. Has the prosecutor any witnesses in rebuttal? Only one, Your Honor. I would like to call the wife of the defendant to the stand. Your Honor, the defense objects to the prosecutor calling Mrs. Carter to the stand. She's being called as a surprise witness, and it is the duty of this court to advise her as to her constitutional right to refuse to testify against her husband if she does not wish to do so. Mrs. Carter, will you please step forward? It is within your right to refuse to testify, Mrs. Carter, if you so wish. I'll testify. We further object. We withdraw objection. You raise your right hand, please. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I help you, God. I, I do. What is your name? Elizabeth Carter. You are the wife of James Carter, the defendant in this case? I am. And were such on the night of August 12th of this year? I was. Do you recall your activities on that night? Yes, very well. I was at home. You are certain of that? Very certain. Now, Mrs. Carter, will you please tell the jury what, if anything, transpired that night to impress this particular date on your mind? It was our wedding anniversary. My husband and I spent a quiet evening at home. Who else was present? No one. It, it was the servants' night out. Now, Mrs. Carter, I want you to answer my next questions as carefully and as thoughtfully as you can. Were you at any time that night away from Mr. Carter? No. Was there in that house at any time during the evening any other person than those you've already mentioned? No. Did you see Inspector Harris in your home on August 12th? I did not. Could Inspector Harris have been in your home without your knowing it? No. Anna, put Sonny's clothes in this case. It won't hold all of his things, Mrs. Carter. Well, pack what he needs, and I'll send for the rest of them later. Come on, Sonny, and help me pack. Can I take my music box, too? Sure. Betty.
Betty, I'm sorry that happened today. They acquitted me thanks to you. It was your testimony that did it. My testimony? You mean my perjury? I was a liar and a cheat. What I did today, I did only to keep my son's father out of the penitentiary. That was all. You won in court today, Jim. But I lost. I lost everything that makes life fine and decent. The lie I told didn't hurt that poor fellow Harris. He's beyond that. But it hurt me. Well, I won't stay here to be hurt again, and I won't permit our boy to be hurt by the things you do. Betty! Wait a minute! Why, Betty, you can't leave me like this. You don't think I wanted to drag you into this thing, do you? For the first time, I'm seeing you as you really are. I must have been blind. I never realized before how far you'd go for power and money. But I didn't want the money for myself. It was for you and for Sonny. That's not true, and you know it. Why, of course it's true. You don't think I wanted Sonny to go through all the things that I had been through, do you? I wanted him to start at the top, to have the best of everything that money could buy, the best school. Don't you see, darling, I, I wanted him to have all the things that I had missed. Well, money can't buy his happiness any more than it's bought ours. Well, we were happy, weren't we? I thought we were. But now that's finished. Betty, Be how can you say that, Betty? I don't understand you. Don't you see, dear, I, I didn't do anything that any other businessman wouldn't have done. Don't you see that? Yes, I see. I also see now what your steamship paradise means. Jim, you are going your own way because nothing can stop you. But you are going alone. Son, you and Mummy are uh, you're going away on a nice long vacation. See, you you got to be a big strong man and and take good care of her. You'll do that, won't you? But I want you to come too, Daddy. I know you do, son. Uh, Daddy wants to come too, but well, I just can't come this time. See. Show him the chart room. Very well, sir. Why, Mr. Wallace? Her oil lines are practically new. She's installed with the latest oil burner equipment, using shuttle valve key pumps. Well, you seem to know a lot about boats, Mr. Carter. I should. I was a stoker seven years ago. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? I am not. I used to be an assistant engineer. Got into a little jam down in Australia and had to stoke my way back. Well, that's interesting. Carter. What is it, Reynolds? The captain would like to speak to you. Ask him to come down here. Tell him I want him to meet Mr. Wallace. Very well, sir. Now, this machinery has all been overhauled, Mr. Wallace. How's that crank for a pump working, Mike? Quiet, Mr. Carter. I hope all this stuff isn't boring you. No, not at all. This is the engine room. <laughs> well, well, I never realized it took so much machinery to run a ship. Bill's pump's okay now? Yes, sir. I just finished repacking it. Eight bells, Jack. How about a little lunch? Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Carter. What are the engines running for? You're not leaving today, are you? No. No, we're not leaving until Wednesday. That's what I want to talk to you about. I need $100,000 to get underway. I'll put the ship up as security. Is it clear? Absolutely. And every cent I got in the world is in it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you. No, no, no. That's too much money to tie up in a proposition like this. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll cut you in for 10% of the profits. That's better, Carter. I guess we'll get together. Jim called up again this morning while you were out. Why don't you talk to him? No use, Pop. It's all over. 
My attorneys notified him yesterday that I was leaving for Reno to start divorce proceedings. I'm sorry it had to end this way. Jim has so many fine qualities. It's a pity we couldn't bring them out. Well, we tried to for years. No, if he ever does change, it will have to come from within himself. Third Marine Union has joined the other two. The whole coast is affected. That's very unfortunate for Mr. Carter. Not nearly so serious for him as it is for the industries. Thousands of tons of cargo are tied up on the docks. Mr. Carter, I'm yeah, afraid... Yeah, I know what you're going to say. This boat sails tomorrow as per schedule, strike or no strike. But we have no crew. There are hundreds of men around the dock who jump at the chance. But it's a chance we shouldn't take. Now, look, 500 people have paid to make this trip. All right, sir. We'll get a crew. But they'll be undisciplined and not dependable. Never mind about that. Get them. Very well, sir. The Paradise will sail tomorrow night. That's the way to talk. Now, please, Mrs. Carter, it's quite possible that your son is only lost. And we've got every available man in the department looking for him. But Tony never wandered away before. Now, please. I'm quite sure everything is going to be all right. We'll phone you the very minute we have any news. Thank you, Inspector. Good night, Mr. Betty, don't you think Jim ought to know about this? Of course, I should have thought of that. I'll send him a wireless immediately. so good. Only three hours out and the passengers are wetter than the ocean. Wildest lot I've ever seen. How's the crew behaving? Just a lot of landlubbers, thoroughly incompetent. Well, what could we expect? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey, you guys hey, 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 I snitched out a bottle from a stewart. And a bottle from a stewart. Oh, by the way, Carter, I've been wanting to ask you about this painting. It's one of your ancestors? No, 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 no that's just no kind of thing. He picked me up one time when I was down and out. He's stuck by me ever since. He's a great guy. Come on, you want to see that dance upstairs, don't you? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. Yeah.
Sonny. Dad! You should not come in now, Daddy. You spoiled everything. I'm a surprise for you. Sonny, how did you... What? Yosie brought me. Aren't you glad to see me, Daddy? Oh, of course I'm glad to see you. Hello, give me the radio room. I'm glad to see you, Daddy. Hello, radio room. Uh, this is Mr. Carter. Take this message to Mrs. Carter. This is James Carter. I knew how unhappy you were when the little fellow was away from you, so I thought I'd bring him back to you. This is the last place in the world for him to be. Now, you go on downstairs and take care of those guests. I'll see you later. Come on now, Sonny. Daddy's going to take care of you until Mommy gets here. We'll see how my pajamas fit you, huh? That'll be funny. Yeah, that'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look! He's a hockey! He's a hockey! It's going well, huh? Why smoke it? I can give you anything.
Shaw, I've got to beat you. Stern first. I can see her from the wheel aft. But someone's got to keep that engine on going. see what I can do. Look, watch the indicator for the right signal. Hey. Try to get it back to his mother.
Jim. Is Sonny all right? Yes. Yes. Betty, Pop was right. I've been through a hell of my own making, and I dragged you into it. I need you, Betty. I haven't anything to offer you now but just my love. Darling, that's all I ever wanted. <laughs> 